Welcome to a new update. I'm having a bit of a cold, so please bear with me. It's this time of year and I may need some water from time to time to clear my throat. We had strong seismic events last night and this morning. Yesterday night, a magnitude 6.2 at Sumatra and this morning, a magnitude 6.3 at the Bolin Islands south of Japan. You may recall that we picked up an atmospheric fluctuation on the 11th that went right over Japan, the Bolin Islands, New Guinea and into Australia. I covered that in the previous update, so this seismic event is a perfect match regarding that atmospheric fluctuation. These strong earthquakes, they follow on the lunar peak that we had on the 13th that was partly due to the lunar conjunction with Jupiter. And I estimated that seismic activity could go into the 6 magnitude range and I also estimated that it would probably not go over mid-6 magnitude. So far that turns out to be correct. However, we have arrived at lunar geometry, a lunar peak, today, tomorrow. This is the mean lunar geometry, the solid green lines. And you may recall from another update that the critical planetary geometry that we had on the 10th could possibly cause larger seismic activity at the second lunar peak, which would be around 16th, 17th. I also said that that would be less likely. I cannot know for sure, of course, so we really have to see what's going to happen today, tomorrow following the lunar geometry with Jupiter on the 13th. We're going to have critical planetary geometry from the 19th to the 22nd. That's going to be really critical because there are five planetary conjunctions involved, some of which are associated with major to great earthquakes. Again, of course, it very much depends on the condition of Earth's crust, what is going to happen. Interestingly, I will cover those planetary conjunctions in the next update in detail. First, I want to look at the atmospheric fluctuations that we picked up in the last couple of days. From the previous update, you may know that the regions from the Gulf of California, Mexico, Central America down to the East Pacific rise were marked by an atmospheric fluctuation. That was the first one we picked up on the 13th. Yesterday we picked up another one marking the same regions. And this morning the fluctuations seem to have expanded both to the west and to the east. So that would mean a higher probability of increased seismic activity for Central America but also possibly South America, maybe less likely, but Ecuador and maybe Southern Chile, that's close to the fluctuation that we picked up. However, to the west we see a firm fluctuation that was very clear and that goes over California, Cascadia, the Cascadia subduction zone, Vancouver and Haida Gwaii region into Alaska. We know that there can be really large earthquakes in those regions, high 7 to 8 magnitude. The last time that that happened, I think, off the top of my head, was in 2012, a major earthquake in the Haida Gwaii region. It's been a while. If we talk about Cascadia subduction zone, the last time that a megafrost earthquake occurred in that region was in 1700. We know from research covering the last 10,000 years that great earthquakes, megafrost earthquakes, magnitude 8.5 and larger, occur on average every 240 years. But there has also been gaps of 500 years, so it may take another 200 years. Nobody knows for sure. But these atmospheric fluctuations, they are very interesting also in light of the critical planetary geometry that we're going to have from the 19th to the 22nd. And again, I will cover them in the next update because I really need to know what's going to happen today and tomorrow if there's going to be a seismic increase following these atmospheric fluctuations, possibly in those regions. That will make a difference. If that's not going to happen, then there's a higher probability that those regions may experience larger seismic events around the 21st, 22nd, counting about five, six days from the moment of the fluctuations. And that is right into the critical planetary geometry. It's not past the critical planetary geometry, it's right into it. So that will be 21st, 22nd. That can happen. So at this point, things are pretty uncertain, uh, but the atmospheric fluctuations are very obvious and up until now in the last couple of days weeks we have seen major seismic events the majority of larger earthquakes in the west pacific and not really any significant fluctuations over the east pacific that seems to change with these fluctuations so it seems we have some interesting days ahead let's see what's going to happen today tomorrow and i will come back to you with the next update covering the critical planetary geometry is really critical we have reports on the website covering major great earthquakes, historical earthquakes, many of them preceded by this kind of clustering of 
planetary conjunctions. Again, it very much depends on the condition of Earth's crust, but I will go into that in the next update. Until next time.